Welcome back again to this channel. And can't get see of wonder Ami Higan for bringing up this story. I would like to show much appreciation to her and Ghana Web for bringing up this massive and wonderful story about the Ellen. As a reminder, this is a story told by a historian and also one of the elders of the Anglo community, uh, the Agbu Tadria for the Togbi Te Agbuzustu, and he comes by the name Togbi Umasa. In our previous episodes, we heard about the story of how Togbi Chala became a Konfo Anuche, and in this episode, we are going to dive briefly into the history of how Togbi Chali lived his life. Yes, so Togbe, can you tell us a little about the story of Togbe Chali? So he came with them, mm. but he sometimes vanished and then returned. Because when he, he left them at Sevier, mm. when he came, the people tried to rebel against their leaders that they wanted to return to Mochi. But when he knew that it was hunger, mm. that was causing them to uh, desire yeah. to return. He... Yeah, did you remember that part, that episode of the Bible that said that God made manna fall for the Israelites to feed on? And that is supposed to be kept for a day. Similar thing also happened in the history of the Ares. And in this time, it's not Moses that is taking them to the promised land, but it is Togwe Charlie that is taking them to the promised land. So, Togwe, how did this go? How did it happen? He caused, he was carrying a harvest sack, and there were some grains in the house. He took a grain and he just spread it. And within a very short time, the maize grew, and then the people harvested. The grain mm. just on the same day, and then he caused two granites. And the granites can they use it to grind the maize to powder, oh. and then they, they disappeared again. Okay, Togwe, you've told us a lot about this man, and I would like to know that when you said this man's story is true, did you have any evidence still existing right now that you can use to prove it that this man truly really existed? Now, in every land, wherever he settled, he left marks to oh. show that he was once there. And when he was of age, even when he came here, he settled in Tomu area and he started to farm. Now, he called rain to fall only on his farm and the people became annoyed and they caught him, tied a big granite on his back and put in the Vota River. That's Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. But the next day they found him riding on the back of a crocodile <laughs> and holding a granite. Wow. And he called, he said, Cheer and see your your man. So he, he rode on that back of that crocodile to enter the guitar lagoon here. You know the Volta River has a, a distributary which passes through Savietula and enter the Volta, uh, the, the La Kita Lagoon. The granite on his back is still near Sava. Oh. It's a mobile granite. So that you find it here, that time you find it. It moves. Yeah, it moves. In the same town. Yes. It's in the lagoon, in the Kita Lagoon. Oh. Now if you go to Anyako, there is another settlement called Sava. So the granite is I saw it. When the lagoon dried up, I saw it on the floor of the oh. lagoon. Then from there he went to Chama. It was Chama where he really settled. So if you go to Chama now, you'll find his tool, where he, he was made a chief. You can find a saucepan where he sometimes settled to fly. And then it was he from flew. there. Yes. He sometimes disappeared. He didn't only really vanish, but he also flew. Yes. Like he turned into a bed. No, he's he sat on the saucepan. And then, like a, a plane, he just flies. wherever he wanted to go. Now, when he wanted to vanish formally, he came to V here oh. and planted. If you go to V now, find some seven agar beans. He planted them. Mm. It was here he crossed the sandbar to the coast 
and called the faithful crocodile and took it to eternity. The same crocodile. Yes. So he, before he left, he told the people how to invoke his spirit. Mm. So whenever they are performing rites for him, they call him by that name. He appeared. But when he came to church, he got even married. After he formally left. Before he left. Before he formally before he left. left. Yeah. Now there is a forest in uh, near Nyako. Mm. He has a shrine there. And then his wife stays in that forest. Now in Angola now there is a clan that belongs to his line. Okay. Okay. His line. Uh, people descended from him. But did his people actually see him flying? Yes. They did. Yes. And when he left, the people saw him left. He didn't die the natural death that. Those are the people, they are the sages of the unknown people. And they are still with us. Mm. When you invoke their spirit, they manifest. Not like us, but you know that the person you are calling is present mm. in your midst. Yeah. This is the story of Tobe Charlie, the twin brother of Tobe Chala, popularly known as the Okon for Anuche. And this is how he led his life, which simplifies that. Tobe Chali and Tobe Chala are probably related. But according to the Akan history, there are no traces of the Chala name. They only based or emphasized on the Okonfo Anoche, which they know is from the Eastern region. Yes. So with these stories, I can tell you that this is their airway school that the Okonfo Anoche is actually an airway and originated from the airways and that is the little they have to share about it the best thing for you to do is so far as you watch this video up to this point like share and subscribe for the next episode